Hello everyone. So, a little over a week has now passed since Square Enix dropped the second trailer for Final Fantasy 16, the game being slated for release next summer, which means that we have approximately 365 days, give or take a few months, to figure this thing out. Now, if you're like me, theory crafting might not really be your cup of tea, since I usually prefer to just wait and see what we actually end up getting. However, there are certain exceptions to this rule, the main one being does this theory allow us to ask some interesting questions about a game like Final Fantasy XVI for example? So rather than being interested in the answers necessarily, I'm more interested in how a theory might equip us with questions that might help us examine and contextualize the game in question. But hey, this is already becoming a pretty long and winded introduction to something that is supposedly a pretty straightforward theory video, so let's get on with it, shall we? So today's theory comes courtesy of MJ Gallagher, or at Final Fantasy VII Novels over on Twitter, who proposed that the name Valisthea, the world of Final Fantasy XVI, could be composed of the words Val or Valur from Old Germanic or Old Norse, and the ancient Greek name Thea, meaning goddess. And when you put these two together, you then get the slain goddess, or goddess of the dead, etc. At first, I thought this was just a case of some crazy compounding, but then I remembered something from the trailer that kind of piqued my interest. It's easy to miss, but in the throne room of what I assume to be Sandbreck, there's a great big painting on the wall, and at the top of that painting is the figure of a woman. So this at least got me thinking there might be some sort of goddess involved. Before we start to try to expand on this theory even further, I want to mention that there are at least three questions at stake here. The first one being naming conventions in the Final Fantasy series, the second being presentations of mythology in the series, and the third one being who is writing the story and what should we expect from it. Starting with the question of naming conventions in the Final Fantasy series, we can begin by asking ourselves whether we should expect the name Valisthea to actually mean something to begin with. Now, not every Final Fantasy world even has a name, as the first eight games all feature mainly nameless worlds aside from those like Final Fantasy VII that got a name retroactively when it was named Gaia, much like the main world of Final Fantasy IX, Gaia being the personification of the Earth and one of the primordial deities in Greek mythology. As such, we can see that using something like Ancient Greek for the name of Final Fantasy XVI's world wouldn't be too far-fetched or too off-brand, although the use of Gaia as a name in this instance is fairly superficial. Then in Final Fantasy X, scenario writer Kazushige Nojima presented us with the name Spira, which actually was intended to tell us something about the world, as it refers to the word spiral, describing how the tragic history of Spira is locked in a perpetual spiral. Then came Final Fantasy XI's Vanadil and Final Fantasy XII's Ivalis, two names that don't really mean anything to the best of my knowledge, but please feel free to show off in the comments below because I would love to be educated on the subject. But moving on to Final Fantasy XIII, Cocoon is of course a metaphorical, semi-literal cocoon, which houses the human race, and in Final Fantasy XIV, Hydaelyn, which is one of the names for the game's world, is the name of the Mother Crystal, a term that also makes a return in Final Fantasy XVI. Lastly, Final Fantasy XV's Eos might be an allusion to the Greek goddess Eos, who was the goddess of the dawn, even though I haven't seen that confirmed anywhere, but just considering how important the concept of the dawn is to Final Fantasy XV, it's hard to imagine this as a coincidence. But where does all of this leave us? Well, it leaves us thinking that it might not be all that crazy thinking that Valis there might have some hidden meaning. Concerning the proposal that it is a compound of Valur and Thea, I still think it's a bit of a stretch though, at least considering how words like Eos and Gaia still remain instantly recognizable. Looking at the Japanese, we can also see that a considerable distortion would be necessary to read this as a compound since the Japanese for Valur, as in Manhala, is Varu, and Thea is Theia, making Varisisea a bit of a stretch, if it would be intended to be understood in Japanese as well. Maybe it's just a name without any real meaning, like Vanadil or Ivalis, or maybe Valisthea is the name of a mythological figure, like in Final Fantasy XIV. What do you think we should expect from the name of the game world? Moving on to the question of the mythos in the game. I would say that Final Fantasy games have gradually started to take their myth-making more seriously, 
At first, the games mainly featured superficial allusions to various mythical creatures in the form of summons or, or monsters, but now it's become more common for the games to feature an actual mythos. This is largely due to the influence of Kazushige Nojima and the mythos he created as a basis for the Fabula Nova Crystallis series of games, including Final Fantasy XIII, Final Fantasy Type O, and by extension, Final Fantasy XV. In Final Fantasy XV, we even get this nice painting which documents the mythos in regard to the prophecy of the one true king. So that begs the question, does the painting in Final Fantasy XVI also tell us something about the game's mythos? Compared to the Final Fantasy XV painting, this painting doesn't seem to represent as many groups. In fact, you just see a mass of people, presumably frolicking, and then at the top we have a female figure riding a dragon, Wyvern or a drake. And it's hard to imagine this mythical beast not having any relationship to the mother crystals scattered around Valisthea, that all have drake names such as Drake's Breath in Rosaria, Drake's head in Sandbreck, and Drake's spine in Valoit. Since the different Drake parts are scattered around the world, I think we can also assume there is some form of death involved, although this might be like the binding coil of Bahamut from Final Fantasy XIV, where there was at least a chance at regeneration. Coming back to the dead goddess theory, the female figure might also be assumed to be dead, although there is less substantial evidence for this. However, she wouldn't be the first important dead goddess in the series, since the dead goddess Atro played a pivotal role in the events of the Final Fantasy XIII trilogy. We might also guess that the figure is the mother of the Mother Crystals, and if they are taking a page from Final Fantasy XIV, her name might be Valisthea, just like Heidelin is the name of a goddess and the world in Final Fantasy XIV. If her name is Valisthea, her name might also be an allusion to the Valkyries, which wouldn't make her a dead goddess, but rather someone who chooses champions to fight some external threat. So maybe we will start by wanting to fight her, but then we realize there is another bigger bad guy behind her. What a classic Final Fantasy move. One last theory I have about the identity of this female figure is that it might be the Maiden of Sandbrack, represented in their coat of arms, and the flying creature might be a drake, dragon, wyvern that is special to the nation of Sandbrack instead of being universal to the world just like the nation of Ishgard in Final Fantasy XIV had a unique relationship and history with dragons. This special relationship is made even more likely considering that the writer of Final Fantasy XVI, Kazutoyo Maehiro, also wrote Final Fantasy XIV Heavensward, as well as A Realm Reborn. But who do you think this female figure is, and do you think she will be important in some way? But let's give the dead goddess theory one last shot by looking at the man responsible for writing the game. So, Maehiro began his work on the Final Fantasy series as an event planner for Final Fantasy Tactics, which released back in 1997. He was then the main level designer and map director for Vagrant Story, and the main battle system designer for Final Fantasy XII, among other things, before becoming the main scenario writer for A Realm Reborn and Heaven's Ward. You could say that the man has some evilness in his blood, since he's worked on so many titles that take place in that world. So maybe Valisthea is just a cool fancy name, like Ivalis. At the same time, however, my hero has also shown an interest in Norse mythology, as Heaven's Word featured many names taken from that mythos, such as Hreisvelkur, Nithokur, and more. It therefore stands to reason that he might be aware of the meaning of Valur as in Valhalla. What do you think? I hope you enjoyed those ramblings. Before you leave, don't forget to leave us a comment with your thoughts and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. The Final Fantasy community has a lot to look forward to and we would love to look forward to it with you. But until next time, ka-ka!